of the Nyang Sane Institute, Professor Abdullah Sen, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, Senior Members of the Bar, present, Amitage alumni, present, Religious Leaders, NGO Representatives, Members of the Press, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the entire team of the Nyang Sane Institute, I take the pleasure and honor to warmly welcome you to the official launching of the Institute. My name is Fatou Bintou Sala and I am the project manager of the Nyang Sane Institute. And my role this evening is to simply introduce Mrs. Jenawa Nyang Jai, a veteran journalist, communication specialist, and amiable personality in, the, in your person who will be the program chair this evening. Mrs. Jenaba Nyangjai, MA, headed the Communication and Documentation Department of Action 8 International the Gambia. She has decades of professional experience in the communications field. Jenaba is an accomplished TV and radio news presenter, a news editor, a report writer, video editor, and is well experienced in public speaking. An advocate for women's rights and tailors her interventions with a gender lens. As head of communication and documentation with the Action Aid, she used participatory methods to interact with policymakers, <coughs> development partners, and civil um, society organizations. Jennifer holds a master's degree in journalism studies and has had the experience of presenting the popular BBC program, Network Africa, and Focus on Africa. This in addition to her working with the United Nations as a public affairs um, analyst, gave her the experience of working in a multicultural environment and broadcasting to an international audience. Presently, Jenaba is the director of three private schools in the greater Banjul area. Please put your hands together for Mrs. Jenaba Nyangjai. Members of the Nyang and Sane families here present, the Executive Director of the Nyang Sane Institute for Research and Justice, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors here present, <coughs> Senior Members of the Gambia Bar Association, Amitage alumni here present, Religious Leaders, Representatives of Non-Governmental Organizations, Members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Sadauda Kera by Jawara Conference Center and to a historic event in the Gambia, the launching of the Nyang Sane Institute for Research and Justice. Before we proceed, I'd, I'd like us to stand up and observe a minute silence in honor of these two gentlemen who have passed on and to also pray in our own ways.
You may please sit down. May their souls rest in eternal peace. And may this meeting turn out to be what it wanted to be. Needless to say, this institute will contribute significantly to the development of the country, the Gambia, like other countries in the sub-region, face worrying signs of religious extremism, <laughs> ethnic and political polarization, which, if not studied and addressed, could fester into community-based conflict. To name a few examples of such conflicts, you have skirmishes in the Fonis, community tensions with Chinese overfishing in Gunyur, growing land disputes in the Combos, sectarianism in Muslim communities, and tensions between Christians and Muslims. Now, the institute that we are launching today is a research and dialogue platform which seeks to, as the name suggests, carry out research and convene concerned stakeholders into a constructive dialogue to promote understanding, build social peace, justice, and promote social stability in support of the Gambia's transitional justice program. The Nyang Sane Institute seeks to be that platform. It is named after two distinguished and world-renowned scholars of Gambian descent, Dr. Suleiman Nyang, formerly of Howard University, and Dr. Lamin Osane, formerly of Yale University. It is an independent, not-for-profit, and a non-government entity. As we progress into the launching ceremony, I will tell you more about Dr. Suleiman Nyang and Dr. Lamin Sani. If the executive director has not already done so. But for now it is called time for me to call on Professor Abdullah Sen. But first of all, please allow me to introduce Mr. Sen. Professor Abdullah Sen, the executive director of this institute, was born in Kaur in Sierra in the early 1950s. Following his primary school education in Kaur, he proceeded to Armitage High School and to Yundum College, where he qualified as a teacher. Sen taught for nearly four years in Karawan and Crab Island Junior Secondary Schools. He earned a PhD degree from the University of Denver, Cobble School of International Studies, and taught for several years at Colorado State, Washington State Universities, and Miami University, where he served as department chair. In 2014, Miami University awarded Professor Sen the Distinguished Hello. Scholar Award for his research on African studies. Professor Sen has published widely on civil military relations, elections, democracy, human rights, and democratic transitions in West Africa and the Gambia. He is the author of The Paradox of Third World Democratization in Africa, the Gambia, under AFPRC, APRC democracy, or under AFPRC rule 1994 to 2008, as well as the culture and customs of Gambia. He also co-authored Not Yet Democracy, West Africa's Slow Farewell to Authoritarianism, and co-editor of Elections and Democrat Democratization in West Africa, 1990 to 2009, and State and Society, Gambia Since Independence, 1965 to 2012, he has published as well as as well over 40 peer-reviewed scholarly articles, book chapters, reviews, and reports. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Abdullah Sen. Mr. Sen, you're welcome.
Thank you, Jainabha, for that very kind introduction. Assalamu alaikum. Mangledi nu yen yep kune kachuturam akisantam. The Sargal Jan Aksane families. Chijotai bitai. The new Khalifa yep nifiteo. Be pare bugalena dialo njukal ak senu atuai. Jota ibena che iluko wara. Moi de buga magal nyari kilifa nyu hamne den karen adina si yep hamne den chilen binda. Aksen gestu, feeling juga, feeling soso, feeling judo, feeling jangge, feeling jari. Mui Dr Sulaiman yang aglamin sana. Bawal beso, nyom nyade men Amerika. Defa ajolare, jolor yuri, cikestu agjanggal eh. Warnanya adu nasib. Luna kau bawa nanti tengko, si tak aksen dam. Luna muda, nyun fiche gambia, nyun teral len, jail base ni jagle lenko, dikte liga ini, liga ini in Afrika, liga ini si Indonesia. So nyun leh nado leh jokal nyun nyep. Nous avons été créés dans l'institut de Dumanrek. Tout le monde, mais tout le monde, nous avons été créés dans l'institut de Dumanrek. Et nous avons été créés dans l'institut de Dumanrek. 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 Nyep aja boleh, nyep nyuwa aja boleh jaga pale. Lumun, luai mun, culu ba, mun nak aja doli. Baca kata rejeri injev. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and I stand on pre-existing protocols to recognize all those who are present. On behalf of the board of trustees. The advisors, fellows, consultants, and members of the institute, I welcome you all to the Suleiman Yang and Lamin Sane Institute lunch. Very quickly, several questions have been raised by individuals. The questions that are often asked include why the need for another institute? Well, as Ms. Nyahas has said, our country today is very polarized along so many dimensions, be it political, religious, ethnic, and many others. And what we're basically suggesting is there needs to be a platform following so many months of consultation that there was a need to have a platform where groups, individuals can come in and uh, talk over things before they flare into conflict that might further destabilize our region and possibly our country. In brief, why named after Professor Sinyang and Sani? I think we've already said something about that. These are two intellectual giants, born in the Gambia, went to grow up, and made a major impact. They were global citizens. One of their distinguishing elements in terms of their contribution has to do with their emphasis on interfaith dialogue. This is a very important plank of the Institute. 
Another question that is often asked is, what is the vision, mission, and objectives of the Institute? In a nutshell, I will summarize that at its core, the Nyang San Institute think tank is dedicated to the furtherance of social justice, to empower and advocate for the resource poor and marginalized, as well as conducting applied social science research to inform policy, instruct, and mentor the young. That is the vision of the Institute. What we are also working to achieve, again, 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 again. as Jennifer had said earlier, is that we aspire to be an independent, respected national and regional think tank research entity, devoted to the promotion of national and regional stability in furtherance of peace, peace building, security, human rights, and uh, deepening the transitional justice system in our country. Now, let me briefly talk about its relationship to the diaspora. For many years, there existed and still exists a community of Gambian scholars who, for many years, really could not have a direct impact on what was going on in this country. Out of this realization, and following many consultations, uh, it was felt that it was needed in this country an institute that would basically further the interests, not only of certain key players within the country, but also the diaspora community who for a very long time have also been marginalized. So the diaspora and the community of Gambian scholars in particular are very central to the creation of this institute. Now another central plank of the institute is to provide mentoring and career counseling for students, young faculty, and uh, anybody who really wants to begin a career. Internships will also be provided and enhance really the capacities for research and scholarship amongst students. Let me briefly talk about the structure. We have a very distinguished national and international advisory board. These are individuals who have distinguished themselves in their fields and careers and who would make a significant contribution to the mission, the vision, and the objectives of the Institute. There are many of them, and I wouldn't dare to name all of them but they are all very distinguished in terms of their careers. Many of them are Gambians. The sad thing is we Gambians seldom recognize the achievers in our country. And these two gentlemen, Nyang and Sani, I believe, and many, many others, need to be recognized for their contribution, not only to national development, at the continental level, and also at the global level. And in celebrating them, we celebrate all Gambians, we celebrate all Africans and their contributions, be they the farmer of country, be they a carpenter, a scholar, a medical professional, a minister. For all those that have made contributions to this country, we say thank you. It is time we began to recognize It is time we began to recognize one another, support one another, rather than undermining one another. 
And the Gambians are fundamentally a good people. And this is something we can basically make better and stronger. Now, in addition to the advisory board, we have consultants, consultants who have a range of experiences who could add value to the Institute. Some of them are here present. And we welcome all of them and those in the diaspora as well. We also have a board of trustees, very seasoned, very experienced individuals who have the connections both nationally as well as globally, who will also bring a lot of experience, know-how to the Institute. Perhaps just as important is that we have fellows, similarly, fellows like the board of advisors are also very distinguished. So really, this is an institute that is predicated or formed or built around writers, creative writers, um, scholars, engineers, doctors, and everyday people, ordinary individuals, have also contributed in no insignificant way to supporting and building the base for the institute. Without further to say, I am really delighted that after so many months, almost a year of preparation, of research, we were able to come up with a concept note, which is still in progress. We are refining it, and we will continue to refine it. We had a pre-launch that basically discussed the note, the concept note, and we were able to make some fundamental revisions and uh, changes. We're going to use this now as a platform with the input from various constituencies to make it better and uh, long-lasting. The Institute is also subdivided into several committees, working committees, that include, among other things, a legal department, a committee that is also dedicated to policy and policy research, governance, mentoring, diaspora affairs, which is very important to us, community outreach, and different able. We Gambians have not done a very good job in taking care of and supporting individuals who suffer disabilities. And we cannot do it all. But this institute is dedicated to supporting, empowering those individuals who, for one reason or another, have been marginalized or disabled or differently abled in some way or another. And amongst us is no other than Mr. Vavasilla, who is a well-known author, a novelist, <laughs> who also has made significant contributions, not only in this country, but in other parts of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I am truly delighted that you're here. I thank all my family members, uh, my nieces and nephews, my folks from Yundum and Amitage. Uh, I am really pleased that you're here. And uh, all those really grandkids who are here and um, distinguished individuals who give up their time to be here with us. I am also very delighted that the diaspora, or some members of the diaspora, could join us, because the first time around, it didn't work. So we are extremely delighted uh, that they are here. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in brief, this is what the Institute is all about. Thank you, Yanko. I think you said it all. I did? Yes. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Professor, for that insight into the uh, Nyang Sane Institute. I think, um, you know, your statement has really um, educated us about what this institute is all about, uh, who stands to benefit, uh, the structure, what it comprises, and so on and so forth. So once again, we thank you for that insight, insightful speech. Um, at this point, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of some members of the diaspora who, are under, who I understand have joined us online. So you're welcome to this meeting if you're still with us. And um, yes, uh, my next item on the agenda is um, Nyang and Sani's contribution to scholarship. And this is going to be uh, taken care of by uh, Comrade Baba Silla. Before Comrade comes, let me tell you a bit about him. Um, Baba Silla started out as a primary school teacher at Njaba Kunda, North Bank region from 1970 to 1971. Then he taught at Armitage High School for another two years. He moved on to serve as senior master and head of department at Crab Island Senior Technical School from 1983 to 1988. Baba taught at Gambia College, GTTI, and the West African Insurance Institute. He was training director for Peace Corps from 1988 to 1990, and a senior management trainer at MDI. He has lectured in colleges and universities in the United Kingdom and in Norway. He holds a master's degree in Global Studies Stavanger in Norway, School of Mission and Theology, a postgrad certificate in further education at Westminster University in the UK, postgrad certificate in international personnel management, Royal Institute of Public Administration in London, a BA honors degree in social science, psychology major, Middlesex University, and social studies diploma in social studies Waltham Forest College of Further and Higher Education in the UK. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Baba Silla to the podium. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, for introducing me so warmly to the, this August gathering. I have met already a few of my former colleagues and um, former students at Anyate School, and I also have met a lot of people who I have not seen for a, for a long time. I am most grateful gathering, and I'm very happy that I have the possibility to talk briefly about Mr. Nyang and Mr. San. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> my colleagues asked me to do this, but I suppose, as the Wolof say, Nekafai Tahafalo. Or, the other reason could be, Nekamak, Shimbeje Halal, Benyo Nital Magya. Why am I Nekamak Urude? Okay. So having said that, um, Madam Chairperson, um, I have very little time to do this. I'm trying to, I'm going to try to condense this as much as I can. But solace of such stature, it is difficult to sort of condense what they have done in a few minutes. In addition to that, asking a teacher to stand before an audience to speak, you're caught in trouble. <laughs> Teaching itself is an occupational hazard and you should all know this. But we'll do our best. Now, every epoch in history carries with it a burden of the past. Maybe ideas, <coughs> thought processes, um, bits and pieces of an outmoded pro production, long-term relationships or interpersonal relationships. And given that we live in a world that has uh, moved and interacted with each other, 
and this movement and interaction has endured for centuries. Now these two distinguished guests are Gambians, as they say in Mandinka, Banco de Gonlem, sons of the soil, who were thrown up by specific history and uh, periods that were very interesting in the development of this world as it is today. Now these distinguished scholars, Nyang and Sane, both of them were born in the 40s, and they grew up within the war years. Sane, for example, was born in the thick of the war years, and Nyang towards the end of the war years. Now they, have, both have, they would have had a colossal influence from the conforming 60s, the conforming 50s, and the 60s, the hippie period, black power, flower power, civil rights movement, movement, and other influences. So what has happened in the end is that uh, we have two scholars who have made a huge impact internationally to have carried the flag for the Gambia, for Africa, and for the world. Now, I want to talk briefly about Mr. Mr. Nyan, who has authored many, many books, monographs, um, on other publications in modern magazines and so forth. The same thing applies to Mr. Sani. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the gory details of the, of the, of the books that they have authored, because we will be here till kingdom come. But, to shorten that, I want to just take little snippets that I have taken from their work. With Mr. Nyan, my take home from the works that I have read, I have not read all of that, I only read a few, but the one that made a big impact on me was during the time that we as Africans were trying to find an identity. Now, to Nyan said, there is no common agreement as to what is Africanity. Of course, what he did say, in addition, was that Africans have three conflicting loyalties locked in their souls. They have to deal with their African, their, their Africanness. A Wolof must deal with his blackness as a Senegambian. They must also deal with those who are racially significant to them. They must also deal with uh, the demands of nations, nationhood. And given the time that he was writing this, he had in mind the boundaries that were arbitrarily drawn in Africa. So with all this, plus the fact that um, colonization has had a colossal impact on the way we think, our culture, our customs, our politics, and our economics. Now, I think he has left it to the economists to come up with theories as to whether Africa would have gone on and follow a capitalist path or other paths. But all the same, he was very clear that all these conflicting loyalties, and as a result of what he calls a concatenation of circumstances, are locked in the African soul. And then he goes beyond that. He says, now us Africans as a people, um, and the world over, the only people in the world, if we were able to have common standards, common visions, and agree to accommodate each other. It is possible to go beyond race and culture and establish a world that is tolerant, a world that, is, that has a vision for its own development, and a world that um, can, can, can give everybody, regardless of where you are in this world, the chance 
to um, achieve your potential. Whether that's going to happen soon or not, I do not know, but I leave it to history. But as is, he says, we are locked in all these variegated islands where we cannot reach out to each other. Now, his move actually led him, he, he had a long journey that led him into um, religion, the study of religion, and his eventual work in interfaith dialogue. Now, his work, um, I will not list out, as I said. I'm going to suggest that, um, as my Somalian brothers do, they, when I said, them, do you know about this? They said, no, brother. Let us go and check Sheikh Google. <laughs> Sheikh Google will give us the answers. And they are right. So I'm going to ask you to go and check Sheikh Google for the works of Sane and Yang. Mm. Now, let me switch to Yang to, to, to Sane very quickly. For a, for a time and for a long time, we have believed that Christianity was the extended imperial arm of colonization. How far wrong have we been? Yes, there were missionaries that came after the explorers and made the colonization, colonizers, because they rode on the back of the colonizers to spread the gospel. Now, fortunately, Mr. Sane, among others in Africa, John Baiti, he once rang a bell. Um, um, Kwame Bediako and several other Africans decided to go and uh, debunk the paradigms that are invested in about Christianity and about Islam and how they had succeeded tremendously. Now to find out that in fact, Christianity was in Africa since the first century. How many of us know that? It was in Egypt. And later on, it was in the Roman territory of the place in Africa called Tunisia. How many people know about Totalian, Cyprian, Augustine, Augustine, Suleiman Nyang went to San Augustine's high school, didn't he? Yes. Now, um, and, and there was also a there was, there was also an African abbot called Hadrian, who had actually um, been responsible for teaching ecclesi ecclesiastes teaching and missionary work in Canterbury. So the foundations of the Canterbury Church was set up by an African called Hadrian. Um, so to say that Christianity came with colonization is error. It's an error. So let's bear it in mind. But both these scholars have attempted in the course of their work, in the course of their life, um, to try to create a paradigm shift in this world. So that we begin to look at Africa and the world from different lattices, through different lattices, and also to debunk the mysticisms that, are, that have been projected. And also, importantly, the, um, the, the, the um, importantly, um, to debunk the um, overwhelming dominance of Western thought into Africa. Now, in addition to that, both of them started different journeys. But both of them have also found out that there is what, what is called in the parlance of hermeneutics a fusion of horizons. That fusion is where Nyang and Sane met in the same work, in the same area um, of 
trying to influence people to begin to talk, engage each other, dialogue. In fact, uh, Sane's book, um, Whose Religion is Christianity, is very evident. He says, we must begin to change our methods. Nyang also did the same thing. Methods of inquiry. They say, Nyang they say, let us talk to people. The conversation is not just ours. We are not the, um, we, don't, you know, we are not monopolizing knowledge, but it is knowledge that we all have. So what we need to do is to talk to each other, share experiences, keep a conversation going, keep a dialogue going, and this is their message. And that is the message of the Institute. So I suggest that we begin to accommodate each other and be tolerant with each other. Now, I am very thrilled and very excited that this Institute is going to make a significant dent in our thinking and in our future. God bless you. Wow. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Silla. That was an exciting piece of speech that you have given. And once again, you have provided an insight into the works of uh, the late distinguished scholars, um, Dr. Nyang and Dr. Sane. So we thank you very much for that um, insightful speech. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to bore you too much with uh, speeches. So at this point in time, I'd like us to have some poetry as an interlude before we continue with... <laughs>